Hello friends, this video on motion and measurement of distance part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the question is, how do we ensure that we have measured length correctly? So that is why in order to measure length correctly, we the, the first thing that is preferred is a measuring scale. So if we are measuring length of objects which are like straight objects. So we prefer uh, a measuring scale. So the few things that need to be remembered while taking the measurements are as follows. So let's say you want to measure the length of this table. So you and you have a meter scale like this. So with this you want to measure the length of the table. So the first thing that should be remembered is the scale should be in contact with the object. Let's say you want to measure this length and you are keeping the scale here. So that will not work because that will again not give you a precise measurement. Maybe you will be uh, taking a wrong measurement. So it is very important that you put the scale at the right position. So this would be the right position for the scale. The scale should be in contact with the object. So this is our object and this is the scale. So both should be in contact with each other. The next important thing is measurement should be taken from zero mark. So when you observe a scale, when you observe a scale very precisely, you will see that there are markings on the scale like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So it is very important that you start taking the measurement from the zero mark. So as you can see here, the scale has been placed in such a way that the measurement actually, the length actually starts from 2. So if you measure it this way, you will end up taking a wrong measurement. So it is always important that you start measuring from 0. So instead of this, the scale should be placed like this so that the 0 starts from here. So correct place placement of the zero mark is very important. The third point is I should be exactly in front of the point where measurement is taken because we are seeing that measurement with our eye. So the placement of the eye is also important. Now you should not sit far away from here and then from there try to observe the measurement. So that is absolutely not correct. You should also not be at a height which is lower than that of the measuring scale. So where the measurement is happening, your eyes should be at the same level as that of the object. So this is also not the right way. So yes, this is the right way where your eyes are at the same level where the measurement is being taken. So these are some of the points which need to be remembered while you are taking measurements so that you are able to measure it correctly. Now many times it happens that the scale is broken from one end. So if the scale is broken from here, then it might become difficult to start the measurement from the zero mark. Maybe the zero mark portion is broken. So in that case, if you are starting from one here or say two here, then whatever measurement you get here, so you have to compensate this from that side. So let's say you have started from two and here the measurement comes out to be whatever, 29 or 30. So you actually need to subtract those two centimeters from the measurement which you actually read on the scale, scale to compensate for this extra thing which you had because the scale was broken. So that uh, consideration need to be done in order to have, in order to get a pre precise measurement of the length. Now there are many devices which are available to measure length. Now some of the common ones are meter scale, uh, the measuring tape. Now in a lot of cases you need something which is flexible to measure length of objects which are curved because scale cannot be used to measure uh, length of objects which are curved. So in those situations we make use of the measuring tape which is almost like a thread and then in fact the tailors often use this to measure the waist length, to measure the length of your arm and shoulders and etc. So the, this is like a ribbon. So it is more flexible but at the same time it also the, the ways to measure remains the same as that of the meter scale. Now when you talk about range of lengths, now we, we mostly talked about the units which we discussed from millimeter to kilometer. But sometimes there are certain special units which help us to measure distances which are extremely large or to measure lengths which are extremely small. Now there are certain special units for this. So let us look at some of these special units. Now sometimes we want to measure lengths which are extremely small. Extremely small means let's talk about the size of the atoms, the size of the nuclei. So when we go to that level, now okay, 
Now, since at this level you might not be knowing what is an atom or what is a nuclei, I'll just give you a brief introduction to it. So anything that we see around us is all matter. Any object that we see, a glass, table, chair, we are ourselves all matter. So these matters are made up of small molecules and the molecules are made up of small atoms. So these atoms are like extremely tiny. They are so tiny that we cannot see them with our naked eye. In fact, we really need powerful microscopes to actually see them. So they are that small. So when you have to measure lengths which are so small, in that case again, we need some very small units which will help to represent them easily. So some such very small units are Fermi and Armstrong. Now let's look at their relationship with meter that will help you to understand how small are these units. So one Fermi is equal to 10 to the power minus 15 meters. So you know what is 10 to the power minus 15? It is like 0 0.0000000. So you actually have 15 zeros and then one. So it is that small. So that much small part of one meter. So that's one Fermi. Similarly, one angstrom is equal to 10 to the power minus 10 meters. So again, these are like extremely small units. So when you want to, these are therefore termed as special units. Now we will not deal with these special units as of now. So just for your information, I'm telling you the range of length is like quite huge. You, we have lengths which are very, very small. We have lengths which are very, very large. So let's look at the other extreme end. There, there are certain lengths which are extremely large. For example, when you talk about the distance between two planets, when you talk about the distance between the sun and the earth. So these kind of distances are like extremely huge. So kilometer is again a very tiny unit when you talk about such huge distances. So here you have bigger units like astronomical unit and light year. These are units of distances which are often used for huge distance. So one astronomical unit is the distance between the sun and the earth and it is 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 meters. So that much is the distance and one light year is the distance that light travels in one year. So that, that's going to be a huge distance, right? And that is 9 into 10 to the power 15 meters. So these are all huge lengths. So this was just a special slide to let you know that sometimes the lengths could be very small or it could be very large. And for that purposes, we have certain special units to take care. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.